everybody. Welcome. This is our first uh, tutorial walkthrough for Elden Ring. So, uh, this is really for uh, new time players or people that haven't really gotten into it much. Uh, we're going to start out uh, with all the base. Now, you bought it, you've installed it, but do what do you do next? Well, of course, you do a new game, but keep in mind, you can make multiple games. So, if you do uh, make a new game, and you want to uh, try a different character, go for it. Because when you go to load game, it will show all your saved games. So, I'm going to go ahead and do a new game here. Because I'm going to show you a few things in the character creation. That is very important. Many people get confused on this screen. And they just go through, oh, I like the way this one looked. That's what I want to use. Nothing wrong with that. But, if you hit your Y button on your controller... Um, at least on the Xbox controller, it'll be the up button on the PS5, whatever the uh, top button is. You can get the stats, and so you can see what they start with. So, example, Vagabond starts at level 9, has uh, Vigor, Strength, and Dex, and Mind, and Endurance, all those updated, but nothing on Intelligence, Faith, and Arcane. We will get into more details about each one of these stats. Um, but it, it basically it starts you not at a level one character. The rule how they well I won't say rule the what they how these have these set up is the one on the left side is probably going to be the easiest for new players to begin with. As you go to the right, the players actually potentially get harder. So you look, this is level nine, level eight, level seven, five, six, seven, nine. Um and then 9 again, 10, and then level 1 character. You can start out as nothing. You get a club, and that's it. Um, we'll talk about the... Uh, everybody gets the uh, return uh, thing. That's just kind of a standard. But So you kind of look at a couple things. What do you want in a character to start out with? Do you want something pretty simple to start out with? Or do you want a little bit more talent? And these, even though they're level higher levels, they may be a different play style. So, um, like the samurai here, it's going to use a katana and a bow as its primary two weapons, which is not bad, but its play style is slightly different. Um, versus a, a, a prisoner, which is probably one of the better casting ones once you get into it. Um, or... The Astrology, which is another caster type, uh, they are a little bit more squishy. So they will potentially uh, take a little more damage. But they're all good. And they all have different play styles, so there isn't a wrong one. And try a couple of different styles out. Um, for this, I'll go ahead and go into as a, uh, the wrench, the worst one. Now you can pick, do you want to be a male or female? Type A or type B. I'm going to do B. You can enter your name. And for this one, we're going to do help guy. I will do helper guy. There we go. And then you can go through and make the body you want. So you can go down body type. You can pick uh, from preset male or female. Or uh, yeah, male or female. So you can see the difference. Your age doesn't really change much other than changes your body outline. Uh, origin, of course, we already picked. You can repick if you don't like it. Keepsake. This is very important. There's some multiple different things you can pick from. So, Amber Medallion. You'll be able to pick this up down the road, so you don't really need it as a keepsake. But it, it basically, I think this one's the Strength Enhancer or the Health Enhancer. I forget which. But it, it basically helps out with that. This rune here... Um, Basically allows you to get runes. Runes are easy to get. Once you get into the game, no reason to keep your keepsake as that item. The Golden Seed. This allows you to have more healing or mana flask. This is probably the best one in my opinion. But there, depending on how you're playing, that may, you may want something else. Um, I always recommend Golden Seed so you can get an extra heal potion. That's always nice. Then you get the Feigned Imp Ashes. This is a, basically a, a spirit that you'll use. 
you'll get a free one down the road and you can pick up the fang dip ashes later on um so this one's not really use worth using at the moment you, you won't need it until later anyway crack pot allows you to uh make throwable items like fire bombs and stuff you'll find these out and about i don't pick it here because honestly i don't usually play with them too often but if you plan to do somebody that does a lot of fire pots you may want to grab this this is kind of nice um to open up certain locked doors um i don't usually get it again i find tons of these after you get into the game and you don't really need one to start out off on um, the very first door you run across requires two keys so this just gives you one extra before then you'll find plenty before you need to get to that zone anyway or that locked door anyway um this is basically um an item to use i never used it um i so i've never gotten it but you find plenty of these again out and about this here allows you to uh Make it so you don't take damage as much. It won't be long. You'll be able to make these yourselves. And it's a one-time use object. So you're really not gaining a whole lot. And then last is the uh, this uh, Deborah's Row. Again, it's another item that will help uh, attract enemies' ag aggression. It's If you're wanting to be a tank and to block a lot when you play multiplayer, this might be nice. But again, you'll be able to get this out and about if you really want it. And it's not too hard to get to if I remember correctly. So for this playthrough, I will do a golden seed. And then you can go through and edit about everything that you want in the sun. I'm going to leave it as default. I'm not going to change anything, but you can alter your hair. You can alter every part of your body. You can add details. But you can also, if you get a good design you want, you can save it to your favorites or load one from your favorites. So you can reuse it over and over again. That's really nice. So we're just going to stay with this base one and I'll bring you back once we get into the uh, next part of the tutorial. I don't want to spoil it, give too many spoilers on some of the fun stuff. Okay, at this point you've went through the little trailer. Don't get discouraged. That was meant to happen the way it happened. There, very few will ever survive and to do it a different way. Not saying it's impossible, but it's pretty impossible but you'll land in here and the first thing you notice you were given some flask versus the flask of crimson tear that's your healing and at this point we're going to turn on a little helper control oh don't want to do that but that's okay um we'll get them back here real quick but i i'm gonna bring up a control stick it's an xbox variation uh very similar though for uh, ps5s where the button layout is they just don't call them x y a b we're in the same locations but the same premise is there so you uh, can use that potion by clicking and on the xbox the x button um if you want to cycle through your potions or any other items you can hit the down on the four-way air uh pad and that will saw you switch blue. The blue one is called the Silurian Tears. That's your mana potion. So if you need more mana, that's how you get more mana. Um, if you get more items, you can go into equipment. Read anything you want there. You can add up to three different weapons that you can switch in between from. You can also add arrows. You can add bows, shields, uh throwing daggers so these are quick slots that you can use you have your different armor levels when you get armor you have uh, uh, your uh, talismans so uh, if you pick the talisman at the very beginning instead of the seed you can click on it here and activate it here we'll get plenty of talismans as you go through the game and then you have your item slot so your Christmas tier your Solarian tears, and then you can add as many more items as you want. Now, speaking of doing this, you realize this takes up weight. Um, these don't take up weight. These just take up slots. Your armor, your weapons, that all takes up weight. If you look on the right-hand side where it says equipment load, right here, I can use my mouse, I forget that. Um, Equipment load, you want to always be medium or light. 
unless you're just really tanking this, you can do heavy, but you're going not to be able to dodge attacks as easily. And this game's all about a dodging attacks. I'll be blunt. If you try to tank some of these things, you're not going to survive as easily. There are reasons to do it, but most people do better at a uh, light or medium low load. Because all I have is a club that weighs uh, 3.5. That's all I have for equipment load. And so I'm very light and I'll roll real easily. You also have your hit points and uh, FP points. So how many hit points and how many mana points you have, as well as how much stamina you stamina you have. You'll be able to upgrade these once you upgrade each one of these level. This is the lowest you can be. Um, then you have poise, which basically just your presence in the world. Um, you get a higher poise when you're going against certain mobs. They may flee or cower. Um, you'll find that with zombies specifically. They'll do that. Um, you have discovery, which by base default, it's 110. You increase your arcane, that discovery goes up. This is what you find when you kill uh, a mob. Will it drop a loot? Will it drop one of its specialty loots? Um, there's a lot of specialty loots that loot that gets dropped by mobs, such as shields and armor. Um, not always the best, but if you're trying to do a specific look, you may need to increase this. They increase your arcane to do it, or there's... Uh, uh, items that you can take that will increase it. Your memory slots, that is your uh, spells. So, in this case, I can memorize up to two spells. I don't have any spells to memorize, but if you are a caster type, you will have a spell or two you can memorize. You can unlock these by going to specific towers throughout the game and climbing them, and there'll be a chest with a memory slot in, that, in them. Um, talk about the stats. Vigor, that really uh, is just your health. How strong, how much health do you have? Well, that's when you upgrade this, you upgrade your health. Mine, that is upgrading your uh, stamina, or excuse me, your mana location. Endurance upgrades your stamina. So these three really deal with these three here. Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, Faith, and Arcane. That actually deals with this side. How much does your right attack arm and your left attack arm do? With my club in my right, I have 114. So that's that's how well I do damage there. Uh, then you have your defenses. All those will affect your defenses, how well you do defenses, as well as your immunity. They all have different variations for what it handles. Um, and it really depends on your build. Now, I don't worry about my defenses for the build because your armor will help with that when you go through your armor. What I do is I look at my weapon. So, bring that up there. If you look in the center, this has a physical of 103. So that means it does, by base default, it does 103 damage. That plus 11 we'll talk about here in a second, but by default, this is this damage on this does 103. Has no magic damage, no fire damage, no lightning damage, no holy damage, and it has a potential of 100 on a crit, a plus 100 on a critical. Um, when you're using it as a guard weapon, it only take absorbs potentially up to 41 percent of the damage of the guard. That's what that physical means. Uh, if you have 100, that means it's going to be able to block up to 100%. That'll be where you get into shields. There's some shields that do 100, there's some that do less. The higher the physical, the better you are for physical. Somebody flashes you with a sword, then this will take care of you. Next, you have a magic, fire, lightning, holy defense. Again, depending on the weapon that or armor you're wearing, that will change based off of that. The important pieces are below this, the attribute scaling and attribute required. So this club requires a strength of 10. So I have to have at least 10 strength to be able to wield this club. Um, you can wield stuff that is above what your level. So say this was a, a strength 12, I could still use the club, but I would not be able to get as much damage out of the club and I would swing it slower. 
So you, you should always meet your attribute required. Um, if you don't, you still use it if you have to, but it's not recommended. The scaling, though, that's uh, how much extra damage you do based off of that weapon. So in this case, this one has a uh, scaling off of my strength. So based on my strength, it will do additional damage above the base damage um, based off of that letter. Now, those letters run from S, which is superb, to A as the next highest one, B, C, D, E, and E is the last one. E is the worst scaling. Any, well, it's the least applied scaling. Having no, like, intent is intelligence is zero, arcane is zero, dex is zero. That's the worst. I mean, the, the, it does, those skills don't apply. But what this does is it basically takes whatever my strength is and then applies a, a bonus modifier to your attack. That's why I have a plus 11. My strength's 10. I have a C, so this is an average weapon, so it gives me uh, a plus 11 at attack damage. As my strength goes up, my physical damage uh, modifiers will go up, so say I had a, a strength of 15, then my extra damage could be 16. Um, there's an actual percentage out there if you ever want to look it up, but just know that's what it causes more damage for this weapon. It means you do better with it when you use it. Now when you first come in, your first thought is just to go right over to here. You'll get this message. When Elden Ring first came out, this message didn't exist. So this does help out, but people still kind of miss it sometimes. But what that's telling you to do is to go over here and drop off. So we will do that. Um, first thing that I want to talk about is, and we didn't do it at the beginning, uh, probably should have, but it doesn't hurt to do it later. This game has both an online and an offline play. For new people, I recommend playing offline. So if you go to your system and go over to the world icon in the menu, the network, make sure you have a uh, Play offline selected. Um, it, you may still see aspects of online until you turn that off. But if you have online on, you're, you potentially could get invaded by somebody else. And you really don't want to deal with that. Also, you, this area would be flooded with red blood stains, um, red messages, other messages out there, gold messages. Um, usually not gold. Gold's usually a summoning and they don't do summoning here. Um, but there could be all kinds of messages on the ground that would confuse you potentially. But white ones are things that you can read that may tell you about more of the game. So this is telling us again, the cave of knowledge lies below. Um, it also could be uh, something that tells you where to go. So these, the yellow ones are good. Now gold ones are helpers. So in certain areas, you may have a, a, a difficult battle coming ahead, and you might see a gold item on the, or a gold dripped on the ground. Go ahead and tap on it, and it will help summon an NPC that will help you battle whatever you're going up against. Makes some of the bosses really easy. Or I won't say real easier. But not every boss has that. Not every fight has it. But if you see one, go ahead and use it. So, this is where you really want to go. Down here. Now, you can fall all the way down. You won't die. But if you go down to the ledge here, you can do a double drop and be better. That's going to tell you how to use items and switch, which we've already went through. But these are your next best places. These sites of grace. Inside here, you can hit touch and sit. And that gives you a, a spawn point. If you die, you will spawn right back here. And then you can go back and get your items. Which basically, you lose runes. The runes are the bottom right corner. I have zero of them right now, but you can get those back. Now, as you go through this, it's going to teach you how to use your, your weapons. Um, I'm going to go with it through you the first time up to a certain stage just to kind of give you an idea of what they're talking about so this one is saying hey let's target a, a mob and you can do that by clicking your right button as you can see it toggles 
If there's more than one and you move it left and right, it will target the next one. So I have him targeted, and now I can attack him with my right button. And it just beats on him. Beats him down. There's another one coming towards me. So we need to go beat him down. And it really wanted us to use the uh, secondary attack, so let me talk about that. So you have your right button, which is the top trigger. That's a light attack. You have your bottom button, which is a heavy attack. So it really wanted me to use heavy attack, so we'll use it here. Oh, this one's going to talk about guard. Um, I don't really have a good guard. Oh, we don't want to do that yet. Um, if you had a shield, you could guard right there. I don't. Um, and the club does not have a guard at motion. But to guard, you would hold down this button and would hold up your shield if you have one. We'll talk about what I did there in between. Don't worry about that. Now you can vo avoid enemy attacks by dodge rolling. This is going to be your lifesaver. I like to target them when I dodge roll, but you don't have to. And you just you can walk up when you get ready to swing. Roll out of the way. And you can dodge them and dodge them. It does use stamina, so you will run out of stamina. And then you just attack them to your heart's content. There we go. Now every weapon has different move statuses, so depending on the weapon depends on what's going to happen. Okay, now you can learn how to jump, of course, which is the A button, I should say that. And then the run button is holding down the B, and it'll run. There's plants you can loot, and they'll give you materials. Later on, we'll show you how you get your crafting, so you can craft with these. Right now, if I look, I have the item crafting's not there. You have to get buy something down the road here to do that. So, with that, we can run through here to the rest. Now we're going to be in this area, and this, they're going to want to teach you how to do one-handed weapons or two-handed weapon. So, one-handed is what we're in now, and we could have a shield, or I can go to two-handed like this. And you can beat him, he's going to hit me. But you hit him with this a few times, and it kind of makes his shield go away, and he, uh, he basically becomes exposed so you can attack them. So again, this is a two-handed weapon. You hold down your Y button and hit your right mouse or right trigger button top. It'll switch between one-handed and two-handed. Or you can switch the other side if you have two weapons. This is one of the few games you can have two weapons loaded at the same time. So you can have a, a right hand and a left hand and have two items at the same time which is nice for wielding a, a sword and dagger if you want to play that way. And you can actually attack with both of those and get additional damage if you get good at it. This is how you switch between targets, and that's what it's going to talk about here, is how to switch. You get these knocked out. And these right now aren't too bad. You can just go up and beat on them. Then we're going to run through here. Usually he throws something at me, but he didn't that time, so you can just take him out. Now, none of these drop anything, but if they did, they'd have a little thing on it. We'll see somebody drop something soon. Now, this is going to talk about the skill, and I already used it once, but we'll use it again. If you have a skill, it'll give you that war on this one, which gives you more damage and a better attack. If you want to know if you have a war, if you look at this here, this one says it has the barbaric roar. Um, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't tell you here what that does, but it basically it increases your attack power. Um, some of them will tell you what they do in another screen. Now we need to uh, sneak up. To do a sneak, you click your left button and you can sneak. And you want to come up behind the guy. And they won't pay attention to you a lot of times. Some will see you, but this guy doesn't. And you get up where you're almost on his back. Hit your right button. And you take him out easily. 
Now, if you're in grass bent over, things will not see or hear you. Well, they could hear you, but they won't see you, so you can sneak up even better. And then you can beat on them some more. I can see it takes them out really quick. Now we're going to talk about jump attacks. So you can hold for a charge attack, and you can uh, you can also do it as a jump attack. So first we'll do the charge attack. That's a charge attack. Then hit them well with it. There's a charge attack, and it makes them fall down. The other one is a jump attack. Again, it makes them fall down, which allows you to get another attack on them. So both of them in combination are really nice. And then the next area, I'm not going to show you. You're going to find it out on your own, and we'll come back at the end of it. Congratulations if you made it to here. From this point, it's back up to the top, and you can leave out here I always come over and grab this item and this gives you your first emote your emotes are over on the side here you already have some and you can come in here and it just gives you a way to greet people if you meet them online um, the strength one if you want to change these you hit the Y button and you can change them to one of the others uh, the strength one is... Where did he go? There he is. And then, the one you just got? Yes. Strength. Um, there are places where you have to use those to unlock things, so... Keep, when you collect them, you will end up using them. So I'll bring you back once we're outside, and we'll talk about some things outside. Okay, welcome outdoors. I will talk about some of the stuff you found towards the end on another walkthrough because that's really about multiplayer. This is new players without multiplayer. We'll talk about multiplayer in a future walkthrough. When you come out, do talk to this guy. Many of the guys you can talk to. Um, he will tell you some information. It's sometimes a little confusing. We're going to go over that information that he tells you. So... First off, you get your first view at the map, and when you look at it, it's got nothing on it. The map's a lot bigger than you see here, um, and we'll learn. I'll show you how you unlock to see what's behind this map. But now you can see all the graces that you've been to, and you can teleport between them just by highlighting on it and say teleport or A, travel. Now you notice this one has a little wisp of ghost going off of it. That's kind of a guidance. It, it's basically saying, hey, go this direction. See what you see if you go this direction. Um, these are kind of giving you an idea how to go um, through the map. They're not 100% though, because they may take you someplace you're not ready to be at. A place where the mobs are too hard or uh, you're, you're not enough levels up. So Use them as a rough guideline, but if you see something or you get into a battle that's just too much for you, go somewhere else for a while and come back to that later on. These are kind of the ultimate journey to what you have to do to fully complete it, but it's not necessarily the exact path you need to follow. And that one's actually pointing right to that church, so that's the first place we're going to go. So let me go to the church and I'll meet you there. Okay, we're at the church here. Um... I didn't say it on purpose, but I wanted you to see that is a boss. You're not ready for him. But if you die, it's really easy to get your runes back, so I, I didn't really stress over it. Um, you will kill him later on down the road, but he's right now too high level for us. So we're just going to ignore him. Whoop, he saw me. He saw me. Time to get out of here. Um, if you get somebody on you, you don't want to want to battle. You go here, it'll reset when you sit down. I'm going to go ahead and sit. And he'll reset. Um, some of them have farther distance viewing than others, so do keep that in mind. Um, but you can run from him fairly easily. And you can dodge around him by walking around the outside. Um, I know the first time I played, I, I tried three or four times to kill him. I never could. 
But when you come here, make sure you pick up this here, the Golden Rune 2. It'll give you extra runes. And we're going to need those once we come in here. So first thing we're going to do is come in here. And we're going to go to our inventory. Now I have turned on in the menu so that I see all the most recent looted items right off the bat so they're easy to find. Otherwise you have to go through the menus to find them. To turn that on, you go to systems and come down here to on the uh, display tab and show most recent items tab. That will turn that on for you. I also turn my HUD on all the time just because I like to be able to quickly look to see what things are. You can move it to auto so it only shows up when you click something in that box. Or you can turn it off altogether. But I like leaving mine on because I like to see, I like to see what things are when I'm not using them. Otherwise I might be on my mana potions and not realize it because it's hidden. So that's one of the reasons why I leave it on. When you come in here you definitely want to get this uh pick up this item this is a smithing stone smithing stones and there's counterparts to them they're used to reinforce your armament up to level three so that basically means i can upgrade my club with smithing stones up to level three so if i use that it's going to tell me i need at least two of those to upgrade my club plus 230 runes which is our mana. So I have 592, I need at least 230. So I could upgrade those. Now, back into my inventory, you can see that was my last looted item. Um, talks about the, uh, this tells you how to do it. Um, either blacksmith or through uh, other uh, anvils you'll find around. And the question marks tell you what ones was the most recently obtained one. So it kind of gives you some more uh, inventory features. This used to not be here. This is something new that they added in. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to use this rune. So you can do that by A clicking on it and then say use. If you have more than one, then you can use as many of those as you want in one shot. I'm going to use one. That's going to give me 400 more runes, which gives me 992 runes to start out with. This guy is a merchant. And, I can also that you're not. Then why not and I'm just going to ignore what he's saying right now and come in. Now I can purchase something. Now, he'll, he'll, if you ask him for his recommendation, he's going to tell you the same thing. You want this, the crafting kit. This guy is really nice because it uh, allows you to craft items, basically. So I'll buy that. The other thing I recommend buying is a torch. Nighttime gets dark, so having a torch is kind of nice it's also a weapon as well um, if you don't have anything else you can use this and some mobs take more damage by fire so I'm gonna purchase that everything else is optional um, these are kind of nice but I hold off for a while because you'll find them um, when you, until you get a bow this is a good way to throw things matter of fact I might grab, go ahead and grab some here now this is using your runes up here at the top. This is the same thing you use for leveling, so keep that in mind. Goodbye. If you want to level, you've got to level uh, with the same runes, so you might want to level first and then buy what, what else is out there. Now, this again, the grace is saying to go this way, and we're going to go this way, because right here, you can barely see it there, but that is where the map for this region is. Wherever you see these little tower type things on your map, that's where a map stone is. So we're going to go over that way. Um, right this second, but first, well, first I want to check. So 103 is my club, that's 54. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my second hand. Now I have a fire in my second hand. Um, and then I'm going to go over here. Not there, that's bolts. Uh, go over here. And I'm going to add in the daggers here so I have them as a, a backup throwing weapon. So I won't use them right away, but in a future rock we'll talk about. So next we're going to go that way. I'll meet you over at a certain spot in that area. Okay, welcome back. There in front of us, you can see the far in the distance is the tower with a little 
speck of light underneath it and some guards riding around. Don't run straight in. That's that's a death sentence. And we're not quite ready for that anyway. You're going to want to run over to the left and go to this other grace point here. And this is the first area to tell you you don't always follow the graces after this point. There might be uh, things you want to do first. So I'm going to sit here and this will start as soon as you touch your third grace and sit down at your third grace you'll get this cutscene. I'm going to skip through this and basically he'll talk about some dead. stuff. They serve at you. I can play turning root to aid you. You need O to the foot of the earth. Okay, I skipped all the dialogue. I'll let you go through it on your own. The gist of it, she is how you level up. So now you have a level up level up at the campfire. I turn your let my hand and she won't talk every time you're at a campfire just at the beginning. But again, this would tell, allows you to level up. And as I was telling you before discussing earlier. Bigger is your hit points. If you look at the top, it's your hit points. It also helps with some of your defenses um, occasionally, but right now this is just for your hit points. Uh, FP, endurance is your stamina. It's also your how much equipment you can load. I forgot about that. So this allows you to carry more equipment. Your strength, so as you can see, it highlighted the strength area. So your right and left attack ability would go up with this. Um, dexterity, this would increase your dexterity. And at level one, mine does not jump a lot yet. It will jump more later. But level one to ten, they don't jump a lot. After ten, they will jump up quite a bit more. Intelligence was really more about your defensive powers and your immunities. Faith, again, your defensive powers and immunities. And then Arcade adds in the discovery capability. Um, these also change how much mana you have uh, or how much damage you do with your spells. So do keep that in mind. It also increases the attack power on weapons with magic ability. Um, if you grab the uh, charge, the uh, golden seed, this is where you use that golden seed at. So the golden seed, use it, it'll increase how many flasks you have. So now I have four. The amount of if how much the flask regenerates requires a, a vial from one of the churches, and there's actually many of them at many different churches. So when you go to certain churches, you'll grab that and drink it at a campfire. Then you can also allocate charges. If you're a ma mage or a magic user, you may want to have more FP or the flask, the blue flask. Or if you're more fighter, you may want more healing. Right now, now I'm all fighter, so I want all healing. I don't really need to recharge my mana. If I lose it, I lose it, and I'll just live without it until the next time you rest. Now, those flasks recharge every time you sit at a campfire. So if you run out, go back to one of these uh, Sites of Grace campfires and sit. Now, she gave us a horse, and we need to summon that horse. There's two different ways you can do this. So, the way I use it, I put it in my pouch. Um, the pouch is over here on the, the left-hand side. And you pick the one you want to put into it. You hit your Y button. And you select the uh, Celestial Seed button. If you don't like it in that spot, you can put it into a different one. Um, or cast it and get on the horse. I'm gonna switch in there. I'm going to switch to that side. Now, once you're on your horse, you can get down by just clicking your left trigger button, the one that makes you crouch. The left stick, I should say. Now, to cast it when you're out here, you don't have to go back to this menu every time. You can hold down the Y button, and it changes your, your pad controller. And if you look, I can now hit the down on the directional pad and summon the horse. If you just move, it just does a normal run. If you hit your B, it makes them gallop faster. You don't have to hold down, you just have to hit it. And you can hit it, and each time it gets a little bit of a speed boost. Now, once you get it, I recommend immediately going back here to the Church of Ella. Don't do anything else, just teleport back here. This 
And there'll be a ghost May here. May I have a word? You want to talk to her? A pleasure to meet I am the witch. I'd heard tell of a tarnished hurtling about. And we'll go through her text off camera here. Okay, after you go through the first set of dialogue, she'll give you two items. Now, you want to talk to every NPC until they're done. Either they go away or they start repeating themselves. It's very important if you if you don't finish the dialogue and you're supposed to meet them at a new area, they will never be in the new area until you finish the dialogue. So go through every dialogue until they're repeating themselves. I have not went through all hers yet, but I will before we leave. So now that you have the uh, summons, which is this guy, Spirit Calling Bill, you need to use that to summon these wolves in specific locations. And we'll show you one of those locations. But I need to put it on me. So to do that, again, I go back over to my pouches on the right hand side here, right in this area here. And I pick where I want to have them. I like to have them there. Pick whatever places where you like to have them. And now it'll be in that right hand side. And again, when you hold this up, when you're at a place where you can use it, it'll be now the right button. You try to use it beforehand, it'll say, hey, you can't do that. Now, that being said, there is another way you can do it. You can put them down here in your pouch. So I could come in here and say, add the, the them here. I could put the horse there. So you kind of pick how you want to play. Um, I honestly like to have them in my quick button window and that way I don't have to scroll through the bottom down here to find it but play how what works best for you because everybody plays differently and that's one thing there's no right way or wrong way to play this game it's what makes you happy remember that do what you need to do play the way you play everybody plays different and you may be better doing something completely different than anybody else than doing exactly what everybody else does so keep that in mind and we'll bring you back here in a second. Where we're going to go is back over to this one here. And you can teleport right by highlighting and hit the A button to teleport. Let's meet back up there and we'll talk about how to get this map stone. Okay. So we're back. And it's still nighttime. If you look way over there, you might see some bats off in the distance. Nighttime brings out new creatures that you may not see during the daytime. So if you don't want to run into unknown creatures... Um, I go ahead and rest. Um, nighttime is always uh, harder, but if you come in here and rest, you can go until morning and then be able to play again during the day. But there are stuff at night. Uh, there's nights that run around that are really tough, and there's other things. Now, I don't need to have my torch in, and I can just hit my left directional button and put it on and take it off, so that's really nice. The torch never goes away, it never burns out, you don't have to buy more of them, one and done. You buy one, it's good. Now if you look on the left hand side, right above where it says Barbaric War, you see like a, a gravestone. That is your spirit ashes saying that you can summon them now. So if I hold down my Y button, you can see my ashes are available. I'm not going to use them yet, but this is an area you may need to use them if you get overran. And it's better to call them off sooner. But how I usually go through to get the first part is I come over here and I stand behind this guy. He's not going to see me. You can stand here all day long. He's not going to see you. But while you're behind him, right up against him, you can backstab him. Get some really good damage on him. And then beat on him. You have to wait until he stands up. I did it a little too soon. Now that guy there, you don't want him to see you. He's got a horn. That horn means he can call for reinforcements. Now I wait until he turns around and I run over here. And then I wait for him to come back. Now I'm staying crouched and I'm staying in the bushes. And we'll wait for him to turn around and come back. Hey, okay, he's almost back here on us. I stay hidden in these bushes because he won't see me here. The bushes are really good for hiding in. I'm going to wait until he turns around and then I'm going to come up behind him. Like so. And then get him in the back. Wait until he stands up and hit him some more. Now he doesn't warn everybody. Now there is a guy over there, so do be cautious of him. 
but you can come over here and grab this map and then clear it off and then run back out and you're done you don't have to do anything else we're not going to do that though because we need to show you how you to summon your horses but if i do my map or wolves if i do my map we now have the full map unlocked really nice now i want to take on some stuff but i want to do this a little bit safer so i'm going to come over here and staying crouch, you can walk around quite a bit and take out some guys here. There we go. I want to be able to take that guy on that's walking around. So I'm going to summon my wolves. And again, you hold down the button and highlight it. Now you got two big wolves. And then I want to get her to come over this way. So I'm going to go ahead and... Whoop, throw one of these knives at her. Now she's going to come running. The wolves are going to go after her. Do some damage. They can almost take her out. You want to back up. Get out of harm's way when you need to. Take out guys that come. And you see the wolves are doing most of the work. I don't even have to do anything. And that takes her out. Now there's more stuff to take out in this camp. And there's some secrets. Uh, uh, underground stairs you need to go through. But I'm going to leave that up to you. The only thing I want to leave on is these here. Whenever you see them, go up to this side of them. Open them up. And you'll find an item in it. Item in it. And a lot of times it's a really good item. This is swords and great sword. I actually like this sword. If I go look at it, I can't use it yet because it requires strength of 16. So I need to get my strength up before I can use it. That is what your next goal is, is to level up. Try to get as high as you can. I got a long ways to go to get some of that strength. Um, but that's something just to work through. Now, if we go back again to the map, this will be our final thoughts here. If you go this way, it's going to take you to the castle here. And that's where you ultimately need to go. But you're not ready for this castle yet. This is about level 20 you really want to be at before you go to the castle. I know people that do it um, lower level or they wait until they're 50 to go do it. But you at least want to be 20, I believe. There's other stuff you can do around here if you wanted. Um, so you can come up here and do some other stuff. But I actually recommend when you first start out, explore around here collecting things. Come down here, explore around here collecting things. Explore around here and collect things. There is a dragon here, but you can stay away from him. He'll leave you alone. But there's other stuff to see in this area, so definitely explore in this area. And go along the beach here. I will give you a few hints. There's a nice little starter cave about right here against the cliff. There's a starter catacomb right here that you want to go into. And then there's another cave here. Um, explore in this area right here first. You'll hear somebody calling out for you. Try to find him. Um, rescue him from his predicament. Because he will later be in this cave. If you don't do it and do the cave first, you can still come back. But I want to give you a chance to kind of play with that. And then next walkthrough, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some of these caves, how to fight a boss in a cave, as well as some uh, ways to level up quicker. So with that, I thank you for taking time to go through this simple walkthrough for new players. And we will see you on the next one.